What's up guys? Dapper here and welcome to Angels with Scaly Wings. I was about to say welcome to Far Cry 5, but it's not. Um, so this is Angels with Scaly Wings. Now, this game... I guess we'll leave that alone. Audio. Music's okay. I'll leave it alone. Okay, that'll be fine. Um, but it's touted as a dragon dating simulator. But I don't believe that at all. Um, but let's just get right in there. Everything's all set the way it should be, I guess. Um, but I don't really know much about this except, uh, detecting user profile. User profile not found. Please enter your name. Name. Dapper. Choose a color. I choose more colors. Cyan, magenta, lime, orange, white. Gold, silver, brass, bronze, copper. Olive, brown, teal, purple, maroon. I just gotta go with gray. Yeah, I'm a gray dude. Does this look right? Yes, it does. Gray is pretty neutral. I was up the Grand Duke. Good to see you too. Oh. Use profile confirmed. Before we start, please review the following information. Controls use left click or enter to advance text or select menu options. Press space to advance text only. This is useful to avoid making selection by mistake. All right. Press escape or right click brings up the menu. F toggles full screen. Use the mouse wheel for page up and page down to review past messages and rewind. Okay. Hold control to press tab to skip, uns to skip scene messages. S takes a screenshot. Huh, that's cool they have, they automatically have keys that let you skip certain things. And take screenshots. Middle click or H hides the, the text window. Okay. If you wish to view this information again, you can do so in the main menu. Okay, cool. That would be all. <laughs> that will be all. Okay, bye system. <laughs> Thanks for the help. The, war the year is 20XX. Only recently has humanity, ah, that's really loud. Only recently has humanity discovered a portal that leads into a different world, populated with a race of intelligent talking dragons. The Dragon Dimension! I was one of the few to travel to this world. But maybe I should start at the beginning. It all began when we discovered a strange device in the middle of nowhere during one of our expeditions. A portal. Out on a hill. Just magically appears. Just gonna go there. I had heard about similar technology before, though that had been more on an experimental level. From what I knew, other portals had been created in the past and were not under consideration for, ma for mass application. As for this one in particular, though, we did not know who had built it, nor when, or why we found it in the wilderness where we did. What was more exciting to us was the fact that it was functional. After our first tests, we found there was someone else on the other side who was in possession of a similar portal. Our attempts at communication through letters were successful, but in the end, the machine's extra extraordinary demand for power meant we needed to act quickly as we wouldn't be able to keep the portal open much longer. When we made this known to the other side, we received a very unexpected reply, a letter of invitation. After some deliberation, it was decided to accept their hospitality and send a person to the other side. No worries, Grendoke, you didn't miss the previous stream. I didn't stream last night because, uh... Yeah, so apologies to anybody who tried to tune in last night. I got home at 5, and I was extremely exhausted after work, because I'd gotten beat up, the fire alarm had gone off, and I was standing out in the rain for the longest time. I was, I'm still... I don't know if I, you can tell, but I'm starting to get a little stuffed up in the nose. I think I got sick from standing out in the rain. Um, but I was just not feeling good after work, and so I fell asleep, and then I didn't wake up until like 4 o'clock in the morning, which is like... It's like 10 hours ago, it's 2 o'clock now, 2 p.m., and I was like, well, screw this, and I went back to sleep, and I slept until like an hour ago, so let's move that out of the way. There was an individual who took the job almost immediately. This dude. Riza Esquieri... Esquiero. Reza Esquiero. 
I knew him, or rather, had known him. We attended the same school back then, and even had a few classes together. We never really were very close friends, but we talked to each other occasionally, and hung, out, hung around the same crowd sometimes. However, we still went our separate ways in the end. I wasn't sure what to think about the whole thing, but he had to have known what he was doing. He certainly was brave. Either that, or just very, very foolish. While I wasn't sure which, his courage was applauded by others. After all, he couldn't possibly have known who or what would wait him at the other end of the portal. And if he did meet someone there, who knew what kinds of attentions they might have? Not that any speculation on our part would have made a difference. When the day finally came, through he went, with the applause echoing across the area, equipped only with the clothes he wore, his multi-tool, a gun, and a device on his wrist that acted as a PDA. Then we waited. The crowd that was applauding him slowly dispersed when the enthusiasm died down, as there was nothing for us to do but wait and speculate. Approximately eight, approximately eight hours later, we received our first message from him. While we had assumed the portal led to another in a different country, or maybe on a different continent, the reality turned out to be much more foreign. The situation he described to us was so outlandish that we initially took it as a joke. A very bad joke, maybe, with even worse timing and no punchline at all. Is this going to be a sad game? I don't know. To be honest, it just says, the Steam Store page says something about, um, it just, it just says, you the player are an ambassador, you the player are an ambassador for Earth sent through a mysterious portal into the world of dragons. Explore a town full of secrets and the people who keep them in this compelling sci-fi visual novel with slice of life and dating sim elements. So that's about it. It doesn't say it says slice of life. It just doesn't say what kind of story this will be. But we'll see. It soon became clear to us, though, that we may just have made one of the most important discoveries since the dawn of mankind. Finding the portal had been remarkable in itself. But this took it to a completely different level. From what he had described, from what he described about the place, or more accurately, its inhabitants, we surmised it could not be part of Earth at all. We called them dragons because, according to Reza, that's what they were, or at least what they resembled most. Even though we found it hard to believe, it had been these dragons who sent us all letters. Who sent us all the letters? And what Reza found on the other side of the portal was a whole civilization of them. They could talk, write books, had buildings and electricity. In many ways, their society was actually very similar to our own. So, who were they? And where was this place? Could they be aliens? Our speculation has led us to conclude otherwise. After all, we knew, after all, we knew about the existence of thousands of planets, millions of light years away that may have been theoretically habitable. Yet, even then, we had never found conclusive proof in regards to actual alien life forms. Some people brought up quantum mechanics and parallel universes, but in the end, all this was just <laughs> parallel universes. I call it the dragon dimension. But in the end, all of this was just conjecture and an ultimately fruitless endeavor, since we had, since we neither had the means nor the resources, resources to explore these possibilities in greater detail. there's just one more thing worth mentioning before I move on. The previous isolation had been mutual. They hadn't known about any other intelligent life form beyond their own. Their portal had only recently been discovered and was a technology previously unknown to them. And just as we had myths about dragons, they had myths about us. <gasps> oh, that's interesting. That was what we knew about them so far. And as interesting as learning those things and debating their cultural significance was, we didn't really know what we should make of it all. Reza apparently Reza apparently was sure of what he was doing, though as he eventually let us know that they had agreed on a trade. We were to give them a few of our PDA devices which contained vast amounts of knowledge, dwarfing even that of encyclopedias. In return, they would supply us with generators. For me, this game looks sad because of the background music. Um, the music just kind of comes across as mysterious for me. It's like it's just has a little echoes. It's got this weird little like twangy. I think it's supposed to be a guitar in the back. No, it's a banjo. 
No, it's quiet again. Overall, they didn't seem as technologically advanced as we had been, but they did surpass us in that aspect. Their means of generating energy seemed sustainable. Not only that, but evidently also quite efficient. We certainly would be able to put technology like that to good use, and trading mere past knowledge of the human race for something more tangible. That's a good call on his part. <clears throat> that was where I came in. My prior experience in both biology and sociology made me a good fit to deliver our PDA devices for the trade. And while in the Dragon's world, waiting for the prototypes of our generators to be manufactured by them, I would act as an ambassador, ambassador on humanity's behalf. I hope this game isn't sad because I don't want to cry in the middle of the night. <laughs> I hope it's not sad either, because I don't want to, I, well, I don't mind crying, but I, I, I might cry anyways. <laughs> what a way to make a first impression by a display of mu mutual goodwill. Everyone benefits and everyone goes home happy. All is well. At least, that was the plan. Despite the images that living talking dragons might conjure, what might conjure up in people's minds, I didn't even think of bringing a weapon myself, considering that they were reportedly friendly and peaceful enough. There was no need for me to fear potentially ill intentions, like Reza did when he had stepped into unknown territory, enacting as humanity's ambassador. And acting as humanity's ambassador, I had to do my best to uphold a high standard in fostering this diplomatic relationship. When the time came for me to step through the portal, all my mental preparedness vanished. My anxiousness was fueled by all the questions lurking in my head, just as the machine started to do its work. Would it hurt? Who would I meet on the other side? What if, what if they really weren't so friendly and just made Reza write those letters, with the pretense of appearing friendly, only to lure us into the den of man-eating monsters and certain doom, with us ending up as nothing more than a tasty afternoon snack? Or you were dissected, because I'm pretty sure that's what Americans would do. Maybe I should have brought a weapon after all. Suddenly, I felt a shiver coursing throughout my whole body. And beyond... <laughs> throughout my whole body and beyond, when I was dis disintegrated. As if every cell, every atom of, of my body was torn from me and pulled into a different direction. That actually sounds very painful. I just realized... Look, these little things in the background, the texture, those are all scales. I just realized that. Or it looks like skills anyways. Maybe they purposely picked that texture. I saw darkness and light. Painted patterns in the stars as I traveled. Painting star patterns. And images rapidly fa flashed before me of things unseen and unspoken. Both horrifying and beautiful. It was an experience unlike any other. Yet over in just a split second. Then it was dark. I could only see a patch of lighter color contrasting with its dark surroundings as my vision started to clear. Its edges got sharper as the patch of light slowly, slowly took shape, giving me the distinguished outline of a reptilian head and an array of horns spouting from it. Here they be dragons. Hello. Of course, it's drawn in anime style. It was a dragon. And as I could now see, a dragon who not only had a pair of round glasses, but also wore a burgundy tie around its neck. Why are they... Okay. I guess they wear clothes. Remy. In the name of our people, I bid you welcome. If I may introduce myself, I am Remy. Your guide and ambassador. A representative of our council. I almost made a reptile joke there. The dragon spoke. It was one thing to have heard and read about this, but something else entirely to have one standing in front of me. In flesh and blood and tongue. It was good that all my men- Oh. Ah, wake up. Stop yawning. And it, it was good that all my mental preparedness had disappeared when I was teleported, because nothing could have prepared me for this. Sorry. Sorry. I imagine you might still feel the effects of the teleportation. Drowsiness or weakness is not unusual, as is fainting and spontaneous emptying of your bowels, bladder, or stomach. How do you feel- <laughs> Wait. How do they know? How do they say that's- how, how, why would that be... How would they know the effects of this? Is this game going to be similar to Doki Doki Literature Club? Um, I think so. It might. I mean, Doki Doki is a dating sim, I'm fairly sure. No, wait. Yes, it is. It is a dating sim. Slash spooky. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's going to be just like Doki Doki, but it could be. 
how do you feel? Rendered speechless, I had totally forgotten that I was shouldering the burden of representing my people to them as well. So much for being professional, but at least it gave me a good, it gave me a good excuse for my blunder. I think I'm alright. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe we should go before it gets too dark. Come with me, please. When did I leave? Hey, rice fields. So I followed the dragon. So I followed the dragon, not st straying too far from him, as the sun had already departed for the day. And the remaining light diminished by the remaining light diminished by the minute. It was. It is getting harder to. It's. It is getting hard to see where I'm going. Sorry about that, but we had a good reason to schedule your arrival like this. We did not want you to be ambushed by a crowd, so we had to keep your exact time and date of arrival secret. Thanks. I suppose an event like this would make me a celebrity of sorts. It would be the same of if one of you came to us. That's quite an understatement. Some people here are rather su superstitious. They might regard you or any of your kind as divine, I suppose. I like the art style. I like the art style too. It's very... I was... I would say manga? It almost was like a manga style, but also, like the background painting on... That's painted on looks very pretty too. Really? How so? We do have certain myths that involve humans and, and as such. Oh, I suppose the history lesson will have to wait for another time. Here we are. By this point, it had gotten so dark that I could barely make out the building before us. I briefly wondered whether they might have streetlights elsewhere, or if they did, just did not require any due to possibly enhanced eyesight or night vision. I could vaguely see the dragon, his light color still visible within the blackness that engulfed the area. Rear up and manipulate the door handle with one of his forepaws. So wait, they walk around on all fours? So they must have opposable thumbs, but they walk around on all fours. Interesting. Hinges creaking, the door opened, and with the flick of a switch, the apartment was flooded with light, blinding me after all that time we had just spent without it. <sighs> Another gosh darn yawn. Man, this is where you will live for the time being. It is fully stocked, but in case you needed anything else, I left you a note with a few phone numbers. It is getting rather late, so I will ta have to take my leave now. In any case, someone will come and meet you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Remy. Have a good night. Until we meet again. Nothing else. Okay, I feel like this is a little underwhelming. I just got teleported to another, another dimension, another world. And the dragon just leaves me in the apartment by myself. I you'd think they'd at least have somebody there to orient me, to like tell me, like help me get situated. He just brought me to the apartment and left me be. That's a lot of trust. With a nod, Remy left the apartment, mindful enough to close the door behind himself. Well, that's common courtesy. Surveying the room, I considered the events that had just transpired as my gaze met the window. I could see movement outside, and as, it, and as, as I drew nearer, startled, I could hear footsteps in the grass moving away quickly. I assumed, assuming it must have been the dragon I just met, I thought nothing of it as I went to bed and slowly succumbed to the sweet allure of sleep overdue. I spent a few moments thinking about my role, my mission, and what it meant to be here now. I felt the responsibility placed on my shoulders. I was eager for the adventure to come. I would be eager. Are you kidding me? I know my responsibilities, but I, I'm, I, I would be excited for the adventure. I'm in another world with dragons. I'm excited. So many possibilities and prospects raced through my mind. Truth be told, the thought of being able to meet an entirely new species and civilization excites me. As I was going to be one of the first to truly experience... Their society, with my own, with its own little quirks, differences, and similarities, I couldn't help but feel like some sort of modern Vasco da Gama or Marco Polo. Uh, I gotta keep my mouth off the screen. Maybe I would even write a book about the whole experience after it's all over. I was sure, it would, <laughs> I was sure it would become a hit, all things considered. At any rate, it was going to be fun. That's exactly the same thing I would do if I was in a whole new world. I'd want to start writing a book about it. I'm the first person to experience this. That'd be amazing. Inception. Oh.
in silence. I woke from uneasy dreams looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. Just for a moment, I wondered where I was before the events of last night all came back to me. After a good stretch, I looked around the room, illuminated by the sunlight coming in from the window. Outside in the distance, the portal I had emerged from proudly stood on the peak of a small hill. Getting ready, I noticed ah, No! Self-voicing disabled. Shh. Stop. I did not realize they could talk to me. Getting ready, I noticed something lying on the table. It was a note Remy had left for me, in case I needed anything. Along with his home phone and work number, there was also some numbers for delivery of food and other necessities, as well as emergency and even janitorial services. He had certainly thought of everything, even though I now had to wonder what a dragon plumber might look like. <laughs> yeah, what would they look like? They've got a tail, so I guess there's not, there wouldn't be the term a plumber's crack in this dimension, would it? My musings were interrupted when the doorbell rang. When the when the when I opened the door, I was met by another dragon. Ah, it's a policeman. Hello. Sebastian. H Hello. You must be Dapper. I'm Sebastian. And I'll be your escort or s security, I suppose. I usually work for the police, though. Nice to meet you. He seemed a lot smaller than Remy, and when he some and he so when he somewhat nervously extended his arm towards me. He appar I noticed he apparently only walked on his hind legs, the two forelimbs instead having distinct arms, hands, and fingers. Kiss his hand. Uh, no. Shake his hand. He obviously wants to shake. When I took his hand into mine to shake it gently, I could feel the individual bumps and scales on his rough skin. Nice to meet you too, Sebastian. So where are you taking me? Why would I kiss my security guard's hand? That'd be really weird. I would never do that. Straight to business, eh? We're going to visit the plant where we where they are making our your <laughs> straight. <sighs> we're I can't speak. We're visiting the plant where they're making your generators. They have some news for you, so I've heard. Reza will be there too. Sounds great. Just follow me. While we walked, I was under the impression we were purposefully avoiding the busier parts of the town, instead straying towards the edges and small alleys as to not garner too much attention. Even then, we got the occasional stare. After just a couple of minutes, we arrived at our destination where we were met by Reza. Only a couple minute walk? I guess that makes sense, but... A couple minutes is like me walking to the end of the block. We were met by Reza, as well as an yet another dragon, a vicious looking beast that didn't stay too close to him. And here comes, yep, that's the picture. <laughs> that is the thumbnail I edited. Hey, Reza, long time no see. How true that is. Good to finally see another human face around here. What a coincidence to have you of all people show up. Yeah, guess those degrees aren't so useless after all. By the way, who's your friend? Just my bodyguard, same as yours. Don't bother with him, he doesn't talk much. <laughs> I bet he'd win in a fight with mine though. Uh, I don't know why, I wouldn't, to be honest, why would I make that comment? I don't understand. Why would I want them to? Why would I want my dragons to fight? This isn't Pokemon. I guess maybe that's what he was, they were trying to do. He looks grumpy, just like you. He doesn't talk much. Very funny. And the two dragons exchanged a few words, and as I met the gaze of the larger tenebrous dragon a few paces from us, Sebastian turned towards me and spoke up again. Hey, Dapper. This is Maverick. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Just don't expect me to give you any special treatment like everyone else is, and we'll all be good. What are you talking about? So you're saying you haven't noticed the stairs and how they treat- they all treat you like you're the next messiah or something? N no, I just thought- We're not the ones making a big deal out of this. You are. We're just here to get what we agreed on, and then we'll be gone. If anything, I'd actually prefer if you left us alone. You're the one who insists on following me around wherever I go. 
As the girl escaped the darker dragon's trembling lips, as he bared his teeth at Reza. All right, all right, that's quite enough. Let's just all go inside already, shall we? After you. So wait, why is this dragon only wearing a hat, but the other dragon was wearing like a lab coat and a tie? Like, I thought they all wore clothes, but this dragon, like, and Maverick's not wearing any clothes, so is that considered naked? Like, why, like, doesn't make any sense. Why were, why are some people, why were some dragons wearing clothes? And some not. If there's an invention of clothes, obviously there'd be a need and a desire to have fashion, um, functionality, and a reason to, like, cover up nakedness or whatever. But, I mean, there are reptiles... Uh, I don't even know. The crisis was quickly averted as we entered the building, which was characterized by its many floors, high ceilings, and long, narrow hallways as Sebastian led us to our destination. There you are. I was waiting... Ah, okay, it is a female. There you are. I was waiting for you. I saw the little... I see the little eyelash things. I'm pretty sure they're supposed to signify it's a female. Wait a minute. I thought we were going to meet the guys from production. What are you doing here? They're only coming in later today, so you'll just have to make deal with me. I see. Well, Dapper, this is Anna. She she kind of manages this building, though she's actually she's more involved with the research wing rather than production and engineering. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I have something for you, by the way. It'll take them a while to make all the generation generators we promised, but we've got one for you here. Feel free to send it home and give it a test. Really already? That's great. I'll take it. <laughs> Looks a little small if you ask me. Don't, under don't underestimate its power. Oh, and do be careful not to drop it. Sure. I'll be waiting outside while you do your thing, Dapper. While I do my thing? What's my thing? I suppose I'll wait for you outside as well. Wait, what is going on? What am I doing? I don't even know. What thing? Oh, have you brought the PDA? Of course. There you go. All right, now to give this thing a test run. The PDA lit up as her hand swiftly moved around its interface and calculated motions. By the way, would you consider letting me run some tests on you as well? It would only take a drop of your blood. What? Why? I work in biology, so obviously... Like minds? Interests? I work in biology, so obviously this kind of thing would be very interesting to us. I'd share the results with you, of course. I was up Jerome's 2007 GD. Hello. Sure, why not? I'd want to do the same thing. Can I? Can we swap blood too? Great. She was quick to she was, she was quick to produce a small device from a drawer, which, from a glance, reminded me a lot of a test tube. Now, if you mind giving me your hand, please. As I reached out to her, she took my hand into hers before she pressed the device into the back of my hand. I winced as pain. I winced in. I winced as pain jolted through my hand. Something sharp drove itself through my skin, and shortly afterwards, a droplet of blood was sucked into the tube attached to the small needle. Only a droplet. Doesn't make. I, I, to be honest, I think they would. I think it would make. It would take more than a drop of blood to analyze. Just saying. Thanks. You're welcome. You gave Anna your blood. Blood donation. Okay, that's an interesting achievement. Looks like your PD is good, by the way. So we're just about done here. And since we're both in biology, it could be interesting if you want to meet me some other time as well. Here's my number. Alright. See you soon. Well, that was interesting. Did she ask you for your blood too? Yeah. Did you give it to her? <laughs> yes. Oh, well, it's your choice. We've got no idea what they might do with it, though. <laughs> what do you mean what they do? They don't analyze it. It's a drop of blood. He probably didn't give her the blood. I'm get Well, like, what would they even... It's just blood. What are they going to do with it? I, I, I don't even understand. I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? I'm all for it. I can't stand early morning. I can't stand early mornings like this. Where does... Hold up a sec, Dremsies. I'm a copy. Translate. Remember me? Do I remember you? Um. 
Dremzy sounds familiar, but I'm not sure. Oh, wait, go back. It's, it's been a while, Dremzy's, if anything. I remember Ramsey's popping in. Maybe you're using it. I think you changed your icon, too. But possibly I remember you. That shouldn't be a problem. There's a cafe not far from here. What do you say, Mavers? I wouldn't mind to grab a bite myself. That settles it, then. Luckily for us, the cafe was mostly empty when we arrived, as it was still pretty early in the day. Reza was quick to lead me to a table for two, prompting the dragons to get one of their own at the other side of the restaurant. <laughs> Ugh. Subscribe from the 80 subs. Wow, that was a forever ago. Good to see you again. I don't know if this is the right translation, but... Ah, oh, finally. I can't send that guy being on my tail all the time. Let's say it's only for... Wait, so which one do I want to pick? For own security... <laughs> Maybe he just likes you a lot. Let's say it's for our own security. I'm very much aware that it, that is what they're saying. We were approached by an individual who appeared to be the waitress at the cafe. She was an interesting looking dragon who, unlike the others had I had seen so far, was more akin to a wyvern, possessing two rather large wings as her forelimbs, which resembled those of an oversized bat. Oh, it's the humans! Wow. Based on what we look like. Congratulations. Oh, it's a track. <laughs> Wait, that, they're all sarcastic remarks. <laughs> Wait, where? <laughs> uh, Reza. <laughs> That's a good one. Good, it made her laugh. <laughs> Reza didn't like it, but she did. That's okay. Reza, I don't like you anyways. Adeem. Welcome to our establishment. My name's Adeem, and I'll be your waitress today. What can I bring you to? If you want. I have 305 spoke. You can teach me to speak Spanish. Oh, that's cool. You've got a channel. Let me check it out. I love this music. It's just really chill in the background. Cool. I subscribe. Well, you now you got 306 subscribers, Jeramsis.
There we go. No, just, just, just that. There we go. Copy. And to paste. Let's see. How about some scrambled eggs with bacon? Today's special. Yeah, me too. Just make it quick. Sure thing. Two specials coming right up. As I was saying, if you look at the big picture, don't you think there's just something off about this whole place? Where it is? Where is it, really? If this is supposed to be a completely separate place from Earth, or even a different dimension, even a different dimension, some things just don't add up. Don't you think so, too? <laughs> Let me grab my tinfoil hat real quick. Well, I could either continue down this line and make myself into a joker, or I could try and take it serious. Yeah, I've noticed it too. I can't really say much more with you. With you know who over there. He's probably listening to us right now. <laughs> hey, he's a char he doesn't seem so bad to me. When I let my gaze wander, I saw that Maverick was looking in my direction. Our eyes met briefly. His expression not showing any discernible emotion. While I wondered whether it w had whether it had just been a coincidence or if he had really, or if he really was able to hear us from the distance, he probably was. I do have some theories, and if I'm right, we might be in trouble. Hola. Right, and there are saves some words. I am from Ecuador. Oh, sweet. Yo soy de Utah. I guess soy de Utah? I am from Utah, soy de Utah? Because I guess soy is more referring to myself. I don't know. You're a native speaker. I shouldn't I should listen to you more than I should listen to Google. Tienes más la? Have WhatsApp? Um, no, I don't have WhatsApp. I've never used it before. What kind of trouble? What are you talking about? Shh, be quiet. I'll let you know more as soon as I can. But for now, let's just play along. After all, we already have one of these babies. Oh, one of these babies. Okay, so he, so, so I'm trying to, I'm piecing together from what, the way he talks, I'm piecing together how his, like, what his personality is. He pad, he padded the generator's box for emphasis. God knows we need him. Oh, there she comes. Oh, there she comes. He's kind of got, like, I feel, like, from the way he's using his slang, he's usually, he sounds English. The female returned, astound, you don't even remember her name is Adine, astounding me with her ability to balance the dishes on the edges of her wings. She placed her forelimbs on the table and proceeded to move the dishes from her wing to us with a gentle push of her snout. There you go. Watch out. It's hot. Now, shoe scaly face. Really? I could be horribly rude. That's awful. I would never do that. Thanks. You're welcome. Apparently, today's special consists of an odd-looking fish of some sort. It was a little hesitant. To I was a little hesitant to try it. But considering the steam coming from it, it was probably better to wait a few minutes anyway. When the, waitress, when the waitress brought out meals to the two dragons across the cafe and exchanged a few words with them, Reza leaned forward and whispered something to me. I'll send you a letter with a coded message later. I'll, you'll know what to do. Reza rose from his seat before he made it known to me that he still had a few things to do and left the restaurant, followed shortly after by the larger of the two dragons. But you haven't even touched your fish. I wasn't in a hurry, so I spent a few more minutes in contemplation 
<laughs> in contemplation while I looked out the window. Not that this whole situation was already bizarre enough. There was also now the vague sense of danger conveyed by Rez's earlier words. I did not even have an idea what kind of threat might be lurking out there. Eventually, I took a bite of my somewhat unusual breakfast. <laughs> While I already thought the smell was quite peculiar, the taste had been even worse. I imagined it might be the kind of delicacy that had an acquired taste. One that I certainly hadn't acquired yet. I decided to get outside before it was too late. Are you done? Sure am. How'd you like it? I'll just say it's probably not for me. And you wouldn't be the only one to say that. You'd better wait outside just in case it decides to come up again. <laughs> you tried the Owl King fish. Yes, I got another achievement. Um, do I... Okay, let's see. Do you able to teach Spanish well? Tears. If a Japanese pimp can learn to speak Japanese, <laughs> wait, if a, wait, wait, if a Japanese pimp can learn to speak Spanish perfectly, I think that your Tenbeam can even, Tenbeam can even, could even write it and speak it. Do I have Facebook? Uh, yes, I do have Facebook. Let's see. Yeah, I do have Facebook. I just haven't used it in forever. I might not. I might not even have the same password anymore. Sure thing. Oh wait. Uh, where'd the chat go? Facebook meet me, Ramses, Epinadad, Ruiz, Copy that, pull up Facebook. I use it to teach you Spanish. Okay. <laughs> Sweet. Well, thank you, Ramses. I'll, uh... I'll contact you... <laughs> I can't speak. I'll contact you after the stream is over. Okay? Uh, let's see. English. I stepped outside, taking in the scenery of this strangely familiar world. In the short time I was here, I had already found the similarities between their world and our own utterly, fa utterly fascinating. After all, we were talking about an unmapped place with the never-before-seen form of life. As far as discoveries were concerned, even something as simple as a new unicellular organism or even bacteria would have been remarkable. 
Yet here I was, standing in the middle of a village evidently built by this race of intelligent, talking dragons, with a society un not unlike our own. Ratsai didn't seem to share the same interest, and instead was more smitten with the generator. But given our reasons for coming here in the first place, I wouldn't blame him for his enthusiasm being focused on something else. Lithuanian... Oh, I just like the alt. That's not what I wanted. Okay, detect language to English and poop. Dapper, do you want to learn Lithuanian? I want to learn a lot of languages. I want to be able to communicate with people. And that's the hard thing about, like, this world is everybody speaks so many different languages. Okay, let's copy and let's paste. See, let's see. Okay, I have to go later, but we'll see you through. Get the transmission. Ciao. Thanks. See you later, Ramses. Ramses sounds really familiar. Copy. Ciao. Ciao. Hasta luego. Okay. Sure, Grand Duke. I'd like to learn Lithuanian too. Okay, my thoughts were interrupted by something suddenly zipping zipped when uh, as something suddenly zipped past me just a little too close, causing me to stumble back. It was a rather small dragon with a bag clamped in its maw, who had apparently who apparently had somewhere to be. But is it a uh, Labas equals hello. Labas. Labas. Am I saying that right? Is it Labas? No. Americans say lay. Labas. Late for school. <laughs> Hurry, kid. I regained my footing and watched as it disappeared into the distance. Even though I'd seen enough dragons to recognize their variations in size, color, and other attributes, I guess this one must have been a juvenile of its species. Shortly afterwards, Sebastian joined me outside, having taken care of the tab. <laughs> I gave her a generous tip on your behalf. I hope you don't mind. Well, great. Now she's thinking I'm flirting with her. How nice of you. In any case, now that you've given us a PDA and Reza has a generator, you're free for today. So if you want to go anywhere in particular, let me know, or I could show you around town. I was tempted to be given a tour, but considering Reza's words, I wanted to be careful and not stray too far without knowing more about this world first. Ne equals no. Labas, hello, no. What about yes? Can I learn ne yes ne next? Ne? Ni? Is it ni or no? Or ni or ne? I think I'll stay home for- No, don't stay home for a day! Go explore! What is wrong with you? I think they should give me the option whether I want to explore or not. I think I'll stay home for today. I still have to get used to everything, you know? I'll just accompany you back then. There we are. Home sweet home. For now, at least. Well, if you need anything, I'll be outside until my shift ends. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. See ya. Sebastian's friendly. I'm, so, I'm glad I didn't kiss his hand, though. That'd be weird. I hadn't really looked at the apartment much, so I spent the next, so I spent the rest of the day investigating it and relaxing. I considered checking out some of the phone numbers Remy had left me, but I thought it was better to leave a, keep a prof, keep a low profile for now. I found the kitchen fully stocked with plenty of groceries, though the variety was wasted on me. I hadn't been a particularly great cook in the first place, but what was more, I didn't even recognize some of the things I found there. Whether they were edibles that we had made back home I just that I just didn't know about or something completely alien, I wasn't sure. But I didn't want to take the risk of eating anything I didn't know. Yes equals type? Type? Da- wait. Dapper, you're a... Nous... 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 Youtuberis? Yapa Yira? Yara? Yara Nustavis? Nustavis? Nustabus? Youtuberis? Dapper is an amazing YouTuber. Oh, thanks, Grand Duke. After all, it was possible that some of the cup. cup. comestibles? But that some of the comestibles might be fine for them to eat, but still be poisonous to us. 
Okay, I'm a little confused. I, I think he means consumables? Comestibles. Let's look that up. What's comestibles? Stibbles. An item of food. Late, it's an old French word. Comest, which means eaten up, and altogether. Eaten up altogether. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. I was also glad to find a shelf that was filled to the brim with a variety of books. While I found the subject matter of man, myth, or reality to be quite intriguing, I had to give up after just a few pages due to its exceptionally dry writing style, which I wasn't inclined to enjoy at the moment. In the end, I settled for an adventure novel about a dragon archaeologist who stumbles upon the remains of a long-lost human civilization, after which she is hunted by an evil organization who wants, to, who wants to use the found magical artifacts for its own nefarious purposes. That sounds like Tomb Raider. While entertaining, I had to admit that it reminded me a little too much of the trashy novels we had at home. I certainly found it amusing that certain tropes were not really unique to us as a species, though I wondered whether this kind of literature had fallen into disfavor here as it had back where I had come from. <laughs> United States of America equals Jung Dinges. Jung. Is it Jung or Jung? I don't, I'm not sure, but I'm assuming it's. Europe says Jung with the J's. So Jung, Jung Dinges. Medicus. Vastios. Yeah, that's not Jos. That's. Vals. Vastios. I was reading a particularly exciting scene in which the hero, Sheridan, Sheridan, uses one of the magical artifacts shaped like a pair of human hands holding a scepter with a globe at the top to prevent herself from being crushed and ground into a bloody pulp by an ancient human temple's moving walls. <laughs> moving walls. This is like Tomb Raider. Like, this story is like Tomb Raider. I was reading a particularly exciting scene in which the hero... Wait, I already read that. When I suddenly heard the doorbell ring, there's an actual doorbell ring. Mr. Postman. Wait, I see the eyelashes. I see the eyelashes are very, like, minute. Kind of way to. I think I think it's supposed to be a female, but I'm not sure. Now the eyelashes are gone. They might have just, they might have just done that by, by itself. Hello there. Would you please sign here? Oh, wait. Where's my. There's my mouse. I'm not signing away my rights with this, am I? I've got a letter for you that requires signature confirmation. I see. Looking over the clipboard, the small dragon was holding up to me. I saw that the sender of the letter in question was Reza. There you go. I'm Lohan, by the way. Would, I'm, would you mind if I asked you a few questions? What is this about? <laughs> I'm just making small talk. Wait a minute, I recognize you. You tried to do the same thing with Reza. <laughs> you tried... Wait a minute, I recognize you. You tried to do the same thing with Reza. Reza, maybe I should report you to your superiors for your inappropriate behavior towards your clients. But it's important, please. Just let me talk to Dapper for a, for a few minutes. I want to talk to him. You know how it is. If you want an interview with one of the humans, you'll have to get permission from the proper authorities. Help me out here, Dapper. As an ambassador, you care about the accurate portrayal of humans in the, in the media, don't you? Then you should talk to me. Otherwise, someone else will fill in the blanks, and who knows what they will come up with. Let me show you something. The small dragon opened his bag. It was so the eyelashes were a little off. Not off. Ow. The eyelashes certainly didn't portray gender, so I can't I can't use eyelashes to check. The small dragon opened his bag, rummaging through a number of letters and small packages. Huh, I think I lost it. Anyway, I wanted to show you some pictures of what people think humans look like. And on some of them, they have like four heads and look nothing like you. It's crazy! What are you? What are you, Lauren? A reporter? No, I'm just... Do you want me to remove him, Dapper? Is what he is saying true? Yeah, I guess. Wait, they think humans have like four heads? I see. That sounds pretty interesting, though. Alright, you can leave your number here and maybe I'll call you later. But that's all I can promise. Thank you! Thank you so much! He quickly produced a small sheet of paper and scribbled his number on it. Afterwards, he sheepishly presented it with both hands. Alright. You got what you wanted. Off you go now. 
Off you go now. He sounds like a... I I'm going to keep him... Off you go now. <laughs> okay, well, he's excited, apparently. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, don't worry about it. I guess that should be all. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Right. Sofa equals sofa. In America, we call them couches. I, I actually haven't heard anybody call a couch a sofa in the longest time. So that's actually really refreshing. A sofa equals sofa. What about, what about the rose? Is a rose still a rose? With all the commotion, I almost forgot that I was also still holding Reza's letter. Within the plain envelope was a similarly plain sheet of paper with his handwriting. When I started reading, however, I saw that his wording was so full of the pleasantries I knew he hated that I assumed every word of it was fake, as to conceal its true intent. He did mention that I'd know what to do. But I wasn't sure of how I was supposed to decode this, the letter's secret message. I didn't remember ever having a conversation about this topic with him, yet he still relied on me to remember whatever it was that I was missing, or he thought I would just be able to figure it out on my own. This is what it said. Hello, my dear friend. Hope this letter reached you swiftly and in co good condition. For unfortunately, we were not able to catch up earlier, so I wanted to write to you this letter. How have you been this last few years? What have you been doing? How's the family? I feel like there is so much we could talk about. We should talk about, since we have not seen each other much recently. At least we have a chance to do so in this form. Quite an exciting venture we are on now, right? How have you liked it here so far? Made any dragon friends yet? Haha. <laughs> why would that? Why would they, Why would you laugh after that moment? Rose equals roll. Rose. Rose. I think that's how you pronounce it. Rosu. Rosu. That sounds Japanese. Anyways, I'll be looking forward to your reply soon. Best regards, Reza. It secretly says, "Hugh, Qua Haber. I, I I don't even know. Uh, oh wait. H I. Help me. I don't know. I like I was supposed to be able to translate that. Various things came to mind. Only reading certain words or letters was one that I thought of immediately, but I couldn't make out anything after I tried to find a system within this array of letters and lines. Maybe I had to look more carefully. I don't know its meaning. Look, so, look elsewhere for hints. Or maybe he referred to the fact that we were both given an apartment. Considering the things they provided for us, maybe I just had to find the right object to decode the message. There were many everyday items here, though, and of course I still had no idea what in particular I was looking for. Look at the bookshelf! The bookshelf was stocked with quite a variety of books on different topics. I can look, I can go back. So wait, I have to find it now. Look at an individual, look behind the books. <laughs> There's no message behind the books, that was dumb. Maybe Reza left me another message here at some point. He could have known that I was going to live here, so I suppose it is possible that he helped with the preparations and hid something for me to find. Nothing? Not even after, no, even after removing every single book from the shelf, there is still no indicator of anything that would help me decode a secret message. But even if Reza did leave a hint, this couldn't have this could have been anywhere This could have been anywhere in the apartment and not just on this bookshelf. Look at an individual book. Maybe it has something to do with the books. The shelf is full of them, but I suppose the hint could be hidden inside one of them. Salt of the humanoids from outer space. Born to serve. Price and prayer. What? Salted with humanoids from outer space. What the? Wait, he had a cat face on there. What the heck is that? Arc 1. It was a dark and stormy night. Rel relentlessly pouring was the rain outside, periodically interrupted by the loud echo of thunder again and again. So quick had its roaring staccato become that it almost seemed like someone was pounding against the door. No, someone really was pounding against the door right now. The door swiftly opened, and the moment for which the house's owner ha had waited decades was finally here. 
Not to the field of battle do you meet me, human scum. But in the comforts of my own home, do you seek to assassinate me? Feel my wrath, may it lead you to a slow and painful death. <laughs> Your resistance will only temper my blade and fear your creature. Taste my blade and die from it. The reply Riley came from the human invader standing within the doorframe. Hero quickly stabbed him with his magic 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 pen. A lethal hit which caused the human invader to slump to the ground instantly. His last words being, D -d Damn you, hero, this is not over y yet. While he melded into a bl red blotch. Blotching up a hero's carpet. What? I don't. I don't understand. Hero looked up into the sky and realized all the thunder and rain had really been the UFOs, or UFOs of the invaders, numerous enough to rival the raindrops falling from the sky. This was the moment when he knew it was too late. This meant war. What the heck? Really? An invasion by human aliens? Is that what they think we're like? Dragonic Desire. No, wait, this is gonna be like Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm not sure if I wanna read this. Wait, Tavo Mama Did you s Is that gonna say my mama's fat? Your mom is gay. Wow! Thanks. Thanks. Yep, you pranked me. You got me good. <laughs> Dang it. I was so young and naive back then. Barely having reached the age at which the arduous process of finding a mate, settling down and starting a family became expected. Yet none of my peers interested myself. They were childish and crude and uncultured. Instead of saying childish, they could have said churlish. That sounds like something more... Society, high society would say. I was lost in a sea of uncertainty, drifting, hoping to be found by the one, one day. And then I did. How fast time flies when you're happy. I can't believe this was just two weeks ago. Two weeks ago I found the one, my truest soulmate there ever could be. Like a wrecking ball, he came out of nothing, breaking all the barriers and entered my life. I came in like a wrecking ball. Breaking all the barriers and entered my life. Two weeks ago I was nothing, today I'm the happiest dragon alive. Who knew that out of all the people alive, it only took the right one to write life itself? Who knew that to, meet, that to meet the perfect one, the only thing you need was love? I don't think there's anything in here. <laughs> and who let this mess ever get to print? Sheesh. <laughs> I liked it better than the, uh, the, the attack, assault, on, assault on dragons, human attack. Letuva? Letuva? Letuana? Oops, Letuva. Make some in sphere and how to use it. As a manual meant for the general populace, this booklet intends to bring you the valued reader closest, closer to the uses and joys an excellent sphere might bring. I've taken utmost care to use simple language and instructions to remove the well-known barrier between individuals and knowledge of proper use of this most wondrous device. For interested parties, a chapter about the Ixman sphere's history and ideas for advanced applications can be found later in the book. Quick start guide. Step 1. Place your Ixman Sphere on a flat, table, stable surface. Make sure that the surface is, indeed, stable and flat. Expert tip. Use a spirit level in order to determine if a surface is absolutely horizontal in order to prevent the Ixman Sphere from rolling off the table unintentionally. Step 2. Plug your Ixman Sphere into any fitting household outlet. Warning. Make sure the Ixman Sphere's power switch is in the off position prior to plugging it in. Step 3. Locate the power switch of the Ixman Sphere. This step may introduce some difficulties, as many different models of the X-Men Spheres exist, with varying models of turning them on and off. When in doubt, please contact your X-Men Spheres manufacturer to start with this, start with this step. What? Okay, now that I know how to work an X-Men Sphere, whatever that is. <laughs> um, price and Prayer. A Politographical Novel. Preface. In the 1420, 14th 22nd year since our ascent to Ascentians, and the most extraordinary chain of events led to the most extraordinary circumstances in our politics and society. These events have since been buried in history until I stumbled upon the records of these tumultuous times. 
I've taken it upon myself to dramatize the events in a manner that is both accurate to history as well as entertaining to any reader who might have an interest in such stories. This is not just for my own personal gain, as I hope to make the story available to a larger audience than just a few who have permission to visit the archives. I believe the wisdom to be gained from the ensuing tale to be more relevant to us now than ever. Panther equals Pantera. Okay. Born to Serve. An autobiography by Abdon the Seventh. I can't remember a summary now. Rise from the Ashes. From the day I was born, I knew I was destined for greatness. As a member of the Abdonian household, nothing less was expected, was expected from me. My father, Abdon the Sixth, made sure of that. My mother, however, was a worm. Not literally, mind you. She was not some sort of annelid squirming beneath the earth and living in filth. She was, no, she was just what I would describe as the lowest form of life. Wow. Rude to your mother, man. Not concerning herself with matters of any importance. She instead sought to base her existence on superficialities. Not that it mattered much, as I grew to hate them both equally. For those who may want to critique me now for saying this, I have no doubt my father's political achievements, yet only those who had to live with him know. Yet only those who had to live with him know that these successes came at the price of his very soul. An empty shell of a dragon, driven by nothing but his performance as a politician, not as a father. Politician, huh? I wonder what their actual government is like. Yeah, since we haven't seen any form of their government yet. You read a bunch of books. Which, which should I go, which should I look into? Um, look in the bathroom. Look inside the cabinet. No razors. There are some pain meds though. Takes it. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hurt. I'm not taking any pen meds. Look inside the shower. Ha! No shampoo to be found anywhere, of course. No hint either. Just some body wash. I'm not looking. I'm not taking the meds. Are you kidding me? Probably an achievement for that, though. Drink a mysterious fluid. Wait, is there an achievement? I don't want to take it if there's an achievement for it. Refuse to help Bryce 99 times. Let's see. Look at everything. Find a mysterious orb. That's probably next some thing. On the second investigation, how do you fall? Listen to a bunch of music. I've already done that. I, so I got the deluxe version of this game. I've just been listening to all of it. Yeah, the music is really good. I got the deluxe version because I started listening to the music and it was amazing. I was like, wow, I'm just gonna get the deluxe. And it gave me a bunch of little screenshots I can use for uh, the game. Do with utterly pointless achievement. Well, I'll leave that alone. Go out. Get me out of. Okay, there we go. Okay, there's no achievement for taking the pills. I'm not taking them. Um, look in the pantry. Just some fruits and veggies here. What should I look at? The date! If I put it on the floor and then step on it, what would happen? It would get squished. I'd be going on a date. Stop! But there's no hit here. The fig. What do I know about figs? Quite a bit, actually. Figs are ripe with history and still enjoy some cultural significance, especially in religious circles. For example, they were the leaves in which Adam and Eve covered themselves up in the Bible's book of Genesis. It also happens to be the kind of tree Buddha achieved enlightenment under. Huh. I didn't know that. Not only that, but it is also mentioned in Greek mythology. Greek mythology. Isn't it fascinating? But wait, there's more! But wait, there's more! The influence of figs also extend towards words, phrases, and sayings we still use today. Take the word psychophanth, for example, which comes from a Greek expression meaning someone who shows the fig, which was a vulgar gesture at the time, or I don't give a fig, which of course is a figure of speech. <laughs> oh, the pants, they hurt. <laughs> Oh, these are great. 
It might as well be said that the influence of figs is as far-reaching as its fruit is succulent. Figuratively speaking, I'm just, dang it, stop! They keep throwing these things in there. Hey, what's up, Watermelon's cousin? What are you doing today? Dang it, puns, fruit puns. I'm afraid nothing of this actually helped Brothers Rest's letter, though. What should I look at? The pear. I picked the pear. There are two of them. What a nice pear. Dang it! Oh, what should I look at? The grape. So Daddy Grape finds this kid crying and asks, What's wrong, kid? And he and threw with it all the tears. The kid couldn't get a single word out. Eventually, the daddy had enough, so he said, Stop with it. No, I won't say it. It wasn't a good joke, anyways. Okay. You learned a lot about fruits. Fruititarian. What the? I didn't even see that. I did not see that achievement. Lemons. Lemons. Lemons, of course. Why didn't I realize it sooner? Lemon juice is about the simplest way to write a hidden message, using household items. We learn about it in chemistry, in the most boring detail, of course. A message written in lemon juice on paper becomes just about invisible to the naked eye when dried. But after heating it gently, oxidization occurs, making the message visible. What's up, Watermelon's cousin? I was sitting next to him in class when we learned that. He made a joke about using the method to cheat on the next test, and I replied by saying he'd have to bring an iron. Had he really expected me to remember a random chemistry test that happened years ago? But then, I did remember it after all. Meet me at the portal tonight. 10 p.m. was all the message said. I wasted a good amount of time, but I still had some left before I'd have to go out to meet Reza. So I decided to make some lunch. Afterwards, I, s I resumed reading my book about the continuing adventures of Shridin and Sheridan and her exploits in destroying cultural artifacts. Unsurprisingly, it came to a happy end. The evil -like organization stopped in its tracks, at least for now. I thought the ending was deliberately left open for ambiguity. But when I turned the page and saw the advertisement for the next entry in this apparently long-running series of books, I realized all of this had just been a ploy to set up the inevitable sequel. Hmm. Luckily, the disappointment didn't last long as I had to get going to meet Reza at the portal. When I got outside, it didn't seem quite as dark as it, ha as it was when I arrived yesterday. I might have had difficulties finding my way otherwise, but I could still see the portal in the distance. As I was walking, I wondered if anyone was following me, but the land seemed oddly deserted. Was everyone else already asleep? Hmm. Eventually, I arrived at my destination. Reza was already standing, standing idly by the portal, his fidgeting making it obvious he had, been wait he had waited just for me. Wait, when did Dapper go live this early? I went live this early because I'm going to try and meet a friend partway through the afternoon. Ugh. Actually, I'm going to be ending the stream soon so I can go see him. This is, yeah. So that's why I was streaming early because I was I might not be back here later tonight, but I probably will. I don't plan on spending all day w with my friend. Just long enough to say hi, catch up, and see how he's doing because... My bro's getting married. Like, I haven't seen him in forever. And he texted me the other day. He's like, dude, we haven't hung out in forever. Also, I'm engaged. I was like, what? Life comes at you fast. That's why you gotta have good insurance. I think that's a low, I think that's a model for some company. But hello, Grand Highblood. I was already wondering when you, whether you'd get it at all. Guess I did. Well, you didn't make it easy. What a wonderful night it is. Okay, randomly stare up at the stars. Just look up at the stars. You can see them so clearly here, without any, without all the pollution lingering in the air, like back at home. Almost as if we were looking right into the face of eternity itself. For so long, humanity thought we'd find aliens out there. Yet, after all these years, we found we were still alone in the universe. Turns out, we were just not looking in the right place. What's going on, Reza? Why did you call me here at this time? For one, because we're sending the generator home. Right, before I was sent here, they told me they would limit the use of the portal, as they couldn't afford to keep it open all the time, in order to keep contact with us and to enable us to send things over to them. The portal would be open for just a quarter of an hour each day. It's... <laughs> it's 30... It's... Yeah, so for you, Grand Duke, it's like... It's like half past midnight. For me, it's like... 
Half past three o'clock in the afternoon. What? Dapper friends getting married? Yeah. Actually, most of my friends are married. I just have a few younger friends who are growing up and reaching appropriate age and finding proper spouses. So, it's... I mean, my younger sister's already married. I'm just not. Right. Before I was sent here, they told me they would limit the use of the portal as they couldn't afford to keep it open all the time. In order to keep contact with us and, in, and to enable us to send things over to them, the portal would be open for just a quarter of an hour each day. Okay. Sending something back home wasn't really problematic for us, since the high energy expenditure associated with sending bigger objects only affected the sender, not the receiver. However, this also meant that until all this business was, con was concluded in regards to our trade with the PDAs and the generators, we were basically stuck here. As for the other, do you know what this place is? You said something about trouble. How much danger are we in, really? More than enough. I'm afraid this whole place will be gone soon, and we better not be here when it happens. What do you mean, yeah, I know? What are you talking about? I hoped you'd see it too, but then it took me a while to understand, and I had a head start on you. In any case, while we, he was speaking, my gaze wandered and fixed on, fixed on some movement nearby. It was hard to make out anything, but I imagined it might just have been wind blowing through the nearby shrubbery, except for the fact that there was no wind. Reza. This might take a while to explain, but we've got the whole night. Reza, look. He turned to face. He turned around to face whatever I was seeing. He squinted hard before he called out, "You! How dare you follow me even here!" The servants came closer until it became clear that it was Maverick, who had hidden nearby to listen in on our conversation. We knew you were up to no good. What were you talking about? What are you planning here? Some kind of attack? Wait a minute. There's no reason for. Don't try to deny it. I heard you both talking about it in the cafe, and I saw the letter. You think I couldn't smell the lemon on it? Pathetic. You'll have to come with me to the police station now, both of you. Come on, I think you're overreacting, but we'll come with you to the- Oh my gosh, he shot him! Reza, what are you doing? Come on, Dapper, let's get out of here. In the dragon in the dragon side, I could see the wound where the bullet had penetrated his hide. A trickle of blood staining his dark scales and the earth beneath. Reza used, he used the opportunity to run off in some direction. I wasn't sure which. I, fra I frantically scanned my surroundings, looking for Reza, though he had already vanished into the darkness. What was I supposed to do? Run away as well? Help Maverick? I was just a diplomat, and I had no idea what was happening. I suddenly dragged and whipped around, hitting me in the gut with his thick tail. I was lifted off the ground briefly before the impact of my body, before I felt the impact of my body hitting the ground, hard enough that my vision blurred almost immediately. A deafening roar battered my ears. Was this his cry for help? I could barely move, but I found it better not to try, as to not startle the wounded dragon more than he already was. It certainly would have ended badly for me if he tried anything. I heard him take a few unsure steps before he lay down on the ground, panting. I'm still watching you, you know, and you better not move, for your own good. If I have to get up again and come after you in this condition, I can promise you I won't be the sun ice. <laughs> it took a few minutes of listening to his labored breathing before someone arrived. It was two dragons. The first I recognized as Sebastian, and the other I didn't know. I heard Ma Sebastian and Maverick exchange a few words when the stocky fellow approached me. Oh, it's police. Look at Spiky Tail. Hey, what's up, Lucas? Hey, kid, you alright? I think I'm alright. I'm a tough guy. I'll be fine. Just got beat up by a dragon. I'm Bryce, the chief of police in this town. Can you tell me what happened? Ma Reza shot Maverick and ran off. Is that so? His face was stern and seemingly lost in thought as I overheard Sebastian's conversation. Yeah, but you're the flyer on duty. We probably, we probably won't find him now. Not here in the darkness at any rate. Well, that's just brilliant. What do you think, Chief? Dapper, can you walk? Yeah, I think so. Alright. Sebastian, take Dapper to the apartment, get us some help here from Maverick, and then we'll look for Reza. Right on. Come on, Dapper, I'll help you get up. Self -voic no, stop! <laughs> Self -voicing disabled. Stop! Don't do that. Come on, Dapper, I'll help you up. This is a horrible game. I'm sorry, Dapper. What do you mean you're sorry? This is a great game. What are you smoking? It's funny so far. Kind of. And it's not, I haven't hit any funny points, but I've heard it's a good game. I was still shaken up by the events I just witnessed when I arrived at my apartment. Not knowing anything better to do, I soon fell into a, into a deep slumber. The 
The next day, I woke with many questions lingering in my head. I considered calling someone from the police department. From the need a drink. Ugh. Lime cucumber. Well, gotta have your daily dose of veggies. Also, I think Daffer's playing this girl. No, I'm a guy. I'm fairly certain I'm playing as a guy. The next day, I woke with many questions lingering in my head. I considered calling someone from the police department to ask about Reza and Maverick, but in the end, I decided against doing so as I was unsure, because <laughs> I was sure they would contact me if anything, if they had anything to tell me. I knew it was no use worrying about it for now, so I settled for starting another book. No, call somebody. Oh, there you go. The doorbell. It didn't take very long though before the doorbell rang. Did Bryce the chief? Did Bryce the chief of police take it upon himself to escort me today? Oh, it's you again. Oh, you. Wait, wait. He, he was happy just a second ago. Yeah, see. Oh, are you surprised? No, but I guess it mean it'll mean bad news. Afraid so. How are you holding up? Better than yesterday, that's for sure. Let's go for a walk then, shall we? Sure. Why not? Let's go talk to the big dragon. This time, I was taken along a different route than yesterday, and I was quite sure there was more to this than just taking a walk. I'll just go ahead and guess you didn't find Reza. Yeah. We hoped he would have come back on his own by now. Do you have any idea where he might be? Maybe he mentioned some sort of place in particular that holds some meaning to him? No, no, not really. We didn't get a chance to talk much at all yesterday before. There's that too. I have no idea why Reza would have done anything like that. I had the impression that they weren't very fond of each other, but this. How is he, by the way? Oh, Maverick is doing fine. But there's plenty of time blame to go around. You're right, they didn't particularly like each other. In a statement, Maverick says he's suspected Reza of planning some sort of attack. Do you know anything about that? Why is it- why, this is like a national issue, like... Somebody from another dimension just attacked a police officer. Like, why- they're, they're not treating this like a very serious situation. If that had happened, like, they're in America, like, they would have been all over that. Like, army, navy, like, freaking, like, they would have gone crazy. No, he only told me something was going to happen. Not that he was planning anything. At least, that was the impression I got. He's, he's suspecting you too, by the way. That you both planned all, this all from the beginning. No, that wouldn't make sense. Actually, none of this is making sense. Why would we go through all, all the lengths of our agreement only to jeopardize it by going by doing something like this? Exactly, right? What's the point of trying to destroy Dragon, trying to kill all of them? It doesn't make any sense. I, you even already have our PDAs, and we don't have much to show for it yet. If we had any nefarious plans, this wouldn't have been a very good idea. You have a good point. I believe you. But from our side, we only have Maverick's word on the whole matter. After all, he was the one who spent the most time with Reza since he arrived here. But even then, he didn't really have any reason to follow you, to follow you yesterday, and his behavior was completely out of line. I'm just glad you came out of. I'm, I'm just glad you came out fine. If he wasn't on mandatory sick leave, he would be suspended right now. <clears throat> we'll have to wait until this whole thing is over before we decide what to do with him. I can assure you, this won't be taken lightly. <sighs> yeah, this weather's really messing with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna threaten him. This attack, this kind of attack on a diplomat would be classified as an act of war, punishable by death. They both acted, maybe. Maybe they both acted in the heat of the moment. Maybe. We still got quite a lot on our hands now, though. We have a wounded dragon and a missing human. This could lead to a diplomatic crisis. crisis. Maybe Reza will still show up soon, and we can get all of this behind us. I hope so, too. I really wouldn't want to jeopardize everything over this unfortunate incident. Yeah, how about we both just keep quiet about this whole thing for now? After all, I don't think any of us wants our people panicking about this already, right? I merely nodded in agreement. Eventually, we arrived at the... At the <laughs> Eventually, we arrived at the police station, where the chief took my formal statement in regards to yesterday's events. He asked me about Reza and Maverick too. Not that I knew much of anything that preceded yesterday's events, or the mysterious catastrophe Rissa had mentioned. Afterwards, he thanked me, 
and left to file my statement while I sat on his, sat, sat on his table, sat by his table, waiting, listening to the goings on in the small provincial town pro police department. <laughs> when he returned, he was approached by someone who seemed to have urgent news. A lot of talking between the two ensued that I couldn't make out from my position. This went, this went on for a bit until Bryce returned to me. Pray to have more bad news for you. Reza has now officially become a murder suspect. Ah, crap. Murder? We're headed to the crime scene and hoped you'd come with us. You're going to take me to a crime scene? I'm, I'm a biologist, not a freaking forensic psychologist or forensic analysis analyst. Me? A crime scene? I don't really know much about forensics. It's just that you're the only link to Reza we have. Consider what he said would happen to us. It's, all, it's in all of our interests that we find him as soon as possible. If he has anything to do with it, he might be able to help us find him. Your cooperation would certainly be appreciated, and it would be a nice gesture to show us that you're trustworthy in the eyes of those who might think otherwise after what happened yesterday. <laughs> um, there's an achievement for refusing to help him. Yeah, but I want to help him. Like, that's something I would do. I'm going to answer these things as truthfully as possible. I want to help. I suppose I don't really have much choice here, but you're right. We've got to find Reza, and if that's what it takes, then I'll do it. Very well. Let us go, then. On our way to the crime scene, we tried to prepare me for what would come. I would studied biology, so, the so I was familiar with the sight of dead animals. Asking myself how f similar this would be, I wondered if my reaction would be any different if it wasn't a dragon, but a human corpse I would be seeing. When we arrived, we were met by Sebastian, who gave us an overview of the whole situation. This morning, the victim was found by a delivery flyer for a restaurant. Blood loss from multiple wounds are the likely cause of death. Forensics was already here, so feel free to poke around. A few paces in front of us, the unfortunate victim lay on the ground, covered by a sheet that concealed the body, but not the large red stain beneath. We approached while Sebastian went off to deter and lead curious onlookers. I know it won't be pretty. I'm sorry for putting you through this, but you know what's at stake here. Just remember what I told you, and you should be fine. Alright. Are you ready? I guess so. Jeez. All these pointless slash marks. What do you think? <laughs> well, he's definitely dead. Yeah, rip. Okay, that breaks the fourth wall right there. That's really, that's... No police officer would just say rip. Nobody. <laughs> or unless it's just short for rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Let's just say this will be your test, and tell me what you can deduce from what you see. Give it your best shot. Investigation start! Two wings, two legs, just like the waitress in the cafe. About as big as a human, lengthwise is, if not slightly taller. The wingspan would definitely look impressive at that size. Wounds are kind of hard to miss. <laughs> it's true, but what are they telling you? <laughs> they were looking with a sharp implement. No, because this one's gushing a lot. Inflicted with sharp implement. They were clean cuts, like from a, they were clean cut, like from a knife or another sharp instrument. That is true, but why does this matter? It couldn't have been Reza. Reza had a gun yesterday. Why would he use a knife now? Right. That weapon he was using on Maverick is called gun, right? Yeah. What strange contraptions. Well, well, yeah, that makes sense. Because humans made guns to kill easier. If the dragons are more of a peaceful people, they wouldn't have developed weapons of mass destruction. Weapons like guns and nukes. Because they have no need to kill each other easier. Well, he could have had a reason to use a knife over his gun if it was him. Can you think of any? He did not want to make any noise. After all, he ran away from Maverick, trying to hide from the police. 
Something as loud as a gunshot would have easily given away his position and alerted others in the area. Alright, good night, Grand Duke. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye. Right, that could be a good reason. By the way, which one do you think was a lethal one? Um, this one. The one on his neck, because it's bleeding the most. That's where the blood is coming from. You can see the direction. Um, the one on the chest looks bad, so he probably got stabbed with either that one first, but mostly that one was the lethal one. And the blood went around his mouth, too. I'm not dumb, I know stuff. I think it was the one on, the one on his neck. That's right. If all the blood from it wasn't a giveaway, this is a stab wound. It's characterized by a similarly small footprint. You can also tell it's the deepest one. And from the location, it's pretty obvious that it must have been the, that it must have done tremendous damage. What else do you see? Uh, well, <laughs> there's a lot of blood. <laughs> this isn't blood. Go back. He died here. Else there would have been a trail we could follow. The splatters also suggest this is where they fought. That's true. Unfortunately, it doesn't help with determining who the perpetrator is. Objection! Excuse me. Sorry, I just wanted to say that. Come on, please. What about the blood on his muzzle? You tell me. He fought back. It might be the perpetrator's blood. Yes, that is true. I, sus I expect forensics already took a sample of it, so it might actually help us determine who the perpetrator is. Hmm, I think that's about everything. Investigation over. But if they aren't able to get a match for the blood, it's probably because Reza didn't give any of his blood away. You know what, kid? I'm impressed. Maybe we should have you around more often. He did well in the first investigation. Investigated one! Yeah! <laughs> Got the first one. Hey, Chief. Do you still need the witness here for anything? Sebastian approached with the dragon who had discovered the body earlier. Recognize her. <gasps> Adine! I recognized her as Adine, the waitress from the cafe. She seemed distraught, which, given the situation, wasn't very surprising. I don't think so. Take her to the department. Get her statement written up, and that should be it. Sure thing. Alright, miss, we're going to have to take you to the department. Why did you say station? Of course. She spotted me, however. Her, compo her composure brightened visibly. Oh, it's the human. <laughs> I have a name, you know. Actually, you don't. I don't. <laughs> you never told me. It. It's Dapper. What are you even doing here? Do you work for our police now? <laughs> it's just a hobby. <laughs> it's just a hobby. Oh, you. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it coming across as flirting? I, it's just a hobby. By the way, I didn't know you also did deliveries. I do a little bit of everything, really. That's nice. I, I liked uh, my uh, fish yesterday. <laughs> I should go away. I don't. No, you weren't here. You, you don't know. No, no sh Sebastian, walk away. I liked my uh, fish yesterday. <laughs> you don't have to hide it. I know it's quite. I know it's quite an attack. <sighs> I have to stop laughing. I know it's quite an attack. <laughs> An acquired taste. To be fair, I wouldn't have recommended it to someone new like you, but you could always you could always try something different. Here's our number if you don't want to come in, and we'll deliver anything we have to you. Thanks. <coughs> <laughs> Sebastian, just get out of here. Go on, just walk away. Sorry, I guess we should get going. Bye. Wait, I thought I was going with him to the station. Okay. Bye. What do we do now? I suppose we'll head off too, unless... Oh no. What is it? We've got a violent homicide and of course nobody from the department tells me. I have to find out from a neighbor who wanted to ask me about it. Good thing rumors travel fast, eh? Oh, Maverick. Well, good morning, Anir, and good morning to Project Cosmeteor. I guess it's morning for you, it's like 4 o'clock in the afternoon for me. Of course nobody told you. You're on sick leave. Mandatory sick leave, I might add. I'm not here on any in any official capacity, you see. I'm really enjoying a curative walk in the fresh air and happen to come across you by accident. What do you want? I don't want anything. I don't want anything. I just find it interesting that no one tells me about this. The prime suspect's buddy can mess with the investigation. I see how it is. 
I know what you were thinking, but don't jump to conclusions here. I don't need to jump to conclusions. I think the, the dead body we found says it all. You really have an attitude problem, you know. <laughs> you know, if you weren't on sick leave, you'd be suspended right now for attacking Dapper yesterday. Do you even have any idea what kind of repercussions this could have on us all? Me attack Dapper? As far as I can see, I'm the only one who, who's injured here. Besides, I'm so sorry for apparently being the only one who's doing his damn job. Right, let's just all sit idly by while the suspect's on the loose and planning his next move. You know, whatever it was Reza was talking about, he was going to tell me just before he showed up yesterday. I don't need to hear you, of all people, belittling me about this. What's your problem? If anything, I want to find him just as much as you do. Don't compare yourself to me. Your words mean nothing. Enough. You shouldn't even be here. So you better go now and get some rest before I have to take disciplinary action. Fine, but when I find him, you'll see I was right. If I have to prove it myself, so be it. What if somebody else came through the portal? Ooh. Conspiracies. So everybody, how is everybody doing this fine day? I say morning, you say morning, I say it's morning too, because I just woke up like two hours ago. So, sorry guys for not streaming last night. I know I said it earlier in the stream. But, sorry I didn't stream, wow, I punched the mic again. I need to get this up out of the way. So, I didn't stream last night because I got home at five in the afternoon and I was exhausted. Fire drill, got beaten up at work. Um, I had to stand out in the rain for like, forever not fire drill somebody pulled the fire alarm and so i had to take everybody outside I sat out there for like an hour before the fire department clears to go back in and so i'm feeling a little sick so i got home at like 5 p.m fell asleep didn't wake up till four o'clock in the, in the morning and i was like eh, i'll go back to sleep and i slept for another eight hours so such is the life in dapper or the life of dapper sleep my day away can he even just do his own investigation like that? Well, as long as he doesn't interfere with us, we can't really stop him from doing things in his own free time. I see. I suspect he won't adhere to the standards of performing an unbiased investigation, though. He's already made up his mind. It's clear to me he won't be looking for facts, just for evidence to support his own view in order to prove it to us, to us or himself. Who knows? <laughs> He's always been like that. Always something to prove. We'll have to be careful. He'll be looking for Reza soon enough. I don't know. They're all plausible. To be fair, I hope I might too if I was shot. I don't know if I would chase down the person who shot me, to be honest. I'd want I'd want like him to be found, but I don't know if I'd chase him down. Because if he shot me once, he'd shoot me again. Let's hope we find Reza before he does. Yeah. Don't worry. Reza will turn up eventually. I surely hope so. There's not there's not much places he can go. This is a world of dragons. Everyone's going to know if there's a human running around. I surely hope so. All things considered, I had to admit that it's there remained a possibility that Maverick was right. But could Reza I knew... But could the Reza I knew really be a murderer? You know what? If you think of something that might help with the investigation, or if you need anything else, just call me. Everybody keeps giving me their numbers. I will. Well, I think we're done here. Let's go. When am I going to be able to call people? Bryce led me back to the apartment. I guess there wasn't really much for me to do in the meantime, as I was prepared the more, as I was spared the more arduous parts of the investigation. Maybe I should have been glad about this, though now I had an afternoon to fill. Oh, what? I meet with Remy, meet with Anna, Lauren, Bryce, Oh, fuck. If I ordered some lunch, that would mean I'd see Aideen again, but she's at the police station, so I'll meet with Anna instead. Because a biologist to biologist, we'll see what happens. She told me to meet her here, so she's got to be around somewhere. The protection facility had different, many different wings, covered, covering everything from research to processing, in addition to production. It was easy to get lost if you didn't know where you were going. I heard some commotion in the distance, and when I approached, I was surprised to see not only Anna, but Remy as well. Wow, world? I, don't, I think I remember this as an island? I, I don't know. I don't know anything about this game, so I don't know. Not, I, I know some stuff about this game, I just don't know a lot. I've never seen any gameplay or know if they're on an island or if... Like, I, I assume this was an... 
I went through a portal. This is a whole new world of dragons. It's not just an island. They seem to be in the middle of a heated con conversation. I thought it would be inappropriate to approach now, so I remained at several paces back out of their field of vision, but still close enough to be able to make out their words. We have heard the rumors. So you come to me on the basis of rumors. Is that how you operate? What do you want from me? This is not the first time you've been in trouble, you know. They might not they might not be so lenient with you this time. I don't know what you're talking about. Consider this a warning. You should proceed carefully for your own good. If you wanted to threat if you wanted to threaten me, the least you could <laughs> you could have done was to send someone more intimidating. You may be larger than I am, but even I can see that you're just a big coward. You wouldn't dare put your dirty claws on me. I wouldn't. I'm just here as a courtesy to you, not to threaten or intimidate. Do with that information whatever you wish. You know we'll be back. And if they find anything, there will be consequences. Why is he wearing lab coat? I don't understand. He's wearing clothes, but she's not. This doesn't make any sense. I mean, dragons are like scales and stuff, but like... You'd think they'd want to be wearing clothes all the time. Because like that would make sense with a reptile... like. Society, they wear clothes to stay warm, so they'd have constant amount of energy. That actually would make sense, why would they wear clothes? Unless it was hot outside and they were overheating, then maybe they would, like a hot days, they'd not wear clothes. But like, the reptiles, like none of their genitals or anything is like out in the air, because they're all like inside their bodies. Like that's how they're made, like biologically. But like, they don't have any like, um, I don't even know. I'm trying to rationalize like, wearing a clothes and not wearing clothes. Maybe some of them like being a slightly colder, I don't know, but. I can't rationalize this. This is a game. It's all fictional. Fantasy. I shouldn't have to worry about, like, logic. Do you think I care? This attitude of yours is not helpful. Neither are you. <laughs> Neither are you. Well, I've said what I came here to say. Good luck. Whatever. Remy turned to leave and started walking in my direction. I ducked behind a pillar, and when he went past, I wasn't sure if he had seen me. Either way, he left, and I was safe to approach now. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> I'm just gonna ignore that. Hello! <laughs> I'm just gonna say, hey, Anna. Hi, Anna. Hey, Dapper. Wait, how long have you been here? <laughs> it's not very long. <laughs> I saw everything. Not that it matters much anyways. <laughs> this is just a par for the course for me. <laughs> I know Remy. I know Remy. What's the problem? If the nerve of that guy. He probably wouldn't be so uptight if it wasn't for that thing with his girlfriend a few years ago. But I don't care about him. It's, it's his superiors that are the problem. They don't like me and the research I'm doing. They cite their traditions and values, claiming that those are what kept us alive for so long. If anything were to change, it would obviously fracture the base this society is built on. Causing it all to collapse, tear your apart families, allowing, and allow all hell to break loose. At least, if you believe those old-timers who keep repeating these phrases. And all that nonsense, because of my research. Valuable, valuable research that could save lives, mind you. What kind of research are we talking about? I could show you sometime, but we're, but we're here to have fun, right? I, th I thought I was here to talk. I thought you wanted to show me, since you said we're both in biology and all that. Sure, but after doing this all day, you'll have to excuse me for not wanting to talk about it anymore. Any anthros have an excuse for thick clothes, it would be cold blooded scales, right? Yeah, no, like, it would make sense because, like, they would need a source for, like, heat and energy. Wasting my time with that guy was just another bit setback. Not that I don't already have more than enough work to do. Even right now, I'm supposed to be working overtime. Guess you can give me the tour some other time then. I will. Oh, and thanks for the blood, by the way. The results aren't in yet, but I'll let you know when they are. She only took like a drop. It says it, a drop, but that doesn't make any sense because they need more just like scan. Like they need like individual like portions for like certain tests and stuff. So, I mean, one drop's not enough unless they can replicate it, which would be kind of weird. Good. I'm just as curious about the results as you are. No, you aren't. I am. I'm way curiouser than you are. Wait, wait, wait. Curiouser is not a word. Pretty sure it's not. Curious. 
processor. Standard English it is not a properly formed word. The standard form is curious. So, curiouser just means increasingly strange. But it must be used in the phrase curiouser and curiouser. Interesting. Very interesting. Curiouser and curiouser. This is, <laughs> that's, that's actually a really good way to approach this game. I'm way curiouser than you are. Curiouser, is that even- <laughs> There she goes, she's bringing it up! <laughs> uh, it is, since the author popularized, your, popularized its use where I came from. Then I am way more curiouser than you are. So, um, increasingly strange? That's what you guys are trying to say? You're way more increasingly strange? Not if I'm the curiousest. Stop. Stop. You're using it out of context, and, like, bad. Stop. I'm gonna slap the back of your hand. Excuse me for a moment, but I must sweep for the English language at this rate. Why don't you just say the most curious or is? <laughs> They're just, it just never stops. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not a linguist, are you? Not exactly, but I have a way with words. My tongue is quite, my tongue is quite skilled, or so I hear. Some might even say cunning. In any case, if you have to work overtime today, does that mean I should wait for you, or do you want me to come back another time? Neither. I think my break should start right about now. <laughs> what a lucky coincidence. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Uh, they would appreciate a fishing mo method of insulation. You know, I think they would. Dra I think... Well, they are... They're, they're dragons, so... Well, you also have to look at chickens. Chickens aren't... Chickens are technically evolved reptile like birds are evolved reptiles but they don't require heat to survive or heat to like have movement and they're not birds are not cold-blooded birds are actually warm-blooded so perhaps with these creatures being around for so long and having a need for like they don't there are some there is some speculation there is some speculation that some dinosaurs were not strictly cold-blooded some might have potentially been warm-blooded um, and I think that's part of like evolutionary traits uh, if like if you're in a colder climate and you need your body to develop your own warmth to survive you'd either give yourself some more insulation or your body your blood would become warm you'd be retaining the heat that you produce um, so I think maybe that's why how these dragons possibly function without any clothing or any form of retaining heat. So, where are we going? But we don't know. We can't speculate. They haven't designated any information for us to know yet about whether they're cold-blooded or warm-blooded. I don't know where you're going, but I think I need a coffee or five. You can tag along if you like. It would be my pleasure. Why not? Let's go hang out. We'll see if it will be mine as well. I hope you brought your own money though, because I'm not sharing. <laughs> Crap, I didn't. Because, it, but everything I purchased is taken care of by my ambassador status. Nice. Actually, that opens up some very interesting possibilities. What kind of possibilities? I'm. It might, but I'd rather not do anything too fishy. I don't want to raise any suspicion, you know. Good point. Well, let's go then. After you, milady. Why would you say milady? Milady. There we. Hey, I know this place. It's Uncle. Mun Muggins? Muggins? Uncle M U G E N Apostrophe S. Uncle Muggins. Coffee, donuts, pasta, burgers. That's actually a wide range of coffee, donuts, pasta, burgers. That's a lot of different stuff to have in one restaurant. Finally, I can't wait to get some coffee into my system. Why are you to live off? Hey, it's Adine! Oh, hello, Dapper. Nice to see you again. Hey, <laughs> who's your companion? <laughs> can't you just take my order? <laughs> I apologize, let me try that again. <laughs> Welcome to our establishment. My name's Adine. I'll be your waitress today. What can I bring you to? I'll have a coffee. Thank you. And what can I bring the esteemed gentle person on the other side of the table? 
Um, I'll also take it. Bring me a beer, soda, or coffee. Bring me a coffee. No problem. I'll be right back. What's your problem? I'm here to order something, not to chit chat with the employees. I think she's just trying to be friendly. I guess not, I guess I'm not a fan of friendly then. Wait, I know her. It's fine. If you say so. Here you go. Enjoy. Is this supposed to be the drinking sound? <laughs> ah, I totally needed that. So you work in the facility, and your point is, what's your job there? I mean, what do you do exactly? We do all kinds of things. The truth is, we just have all. Wait, did I skip? Okay. We just have all kinds of specialized machinery there, which is used by many different people for many different purposes. The building is owned and run by the council, who oversees the schedule. It is quite handy, since you go from research to testing and even manufacturing all in the same complex. I started out as a researcher in biology, which is still my main job, but I've been there so long and learned the ins and outs of the building so well that eventually I was asked to take over some managerial duties. Uh, I'll be ending the stream real soon, in like 10 minutes. I started out as a researcher in biology, which is still my main job. Oh wait, yeah, manager of duties. Sure, it means more work, but it also allows me to run a personal project every once in a while. Does that say to your curiosity? I've only seen glimpses, but it already sounds like a fascinating place. I'm not sure I'd go so far as to call it fascinating, but it sure does give me a lot of opportunities. Oh, I forgot to ask you what you pl actually planned to do with my blood on the test results. <laughs> what is it? An interrogation? <laughs> yes, totally. You can call your lawyer if you like. <laughs> Maybe I should. I'll tell you you hit me, then sue for damages. Oh, Alright, I'll finish my drink quietly then if that's what you prefer. Finish my drink quietly then. Sorry, I'm just stressed. Wait, wait. <laughs> she groaned. Excuse me, princess. Wait, what did she say before? I don't know her that well. I don't think I'd actually say, excuse me, princess. I think I'd just say, alright, I'll finish my drink quietly then, if that's what you prefer. Sorry, I'm just stressed from all the work lately. I'm not getting much resp respite between my regular work, overtime, personal projects, and other disturbances like that. Remedy sticking his nose where he doesn't belong. What do you usually do during your free time? Having a good work-life balance is very important, you know. I love my job. I really do. Actually, I love it so much that even in my free time, I still do things that have to do with biology. As I've said, I've got the opportunity to do my own projects sometimes, so that's what I focus on when I get the chance. It would be a shame to pass up an opportunity like that without using it. With the current influx of work, I rarely leave the facility if I'm not eating or sleeping. Even right now, I'm only on break and have, and have to go back for another shift. Maybe you should do something else for a change. Maybe, but right now that's not really an option. It would help if the council weren't constantly sending their lackeys to mess with me. So that wasn't the first time? No, I suppose I'm on their watch list or something. Why is that? It's a long story. N not one for a first date. Date? You're saying this is a date? <laughs> no, I'm saying that even if this was a date, which would be more than whatever this is, it wouldn't be very appropriate. Stories about work aren't very romantic. It's always about work with you. Come on, you're on break. Maybe we should do something to take your mind off all that. What? Off off of all that for once like what i'm not sure do you have any other hobbies not really hey waitress you could, hey, hey, just say hey dean how can i help you do you have anything here to entertain our guests any games or other distractions i'm not sure let me go check what kind of restaurant just has games lying around that's so weird what exactly are you trying to do I'm being cute and spontaneous. <laughs> okay. I'll remember this day, for good or bad. I'm not sure yet. Well, good. 
It's more for the kids, but we don't really have anything else. Is it a puzzle? It's fine, thank you. Have fun. <laughs> a board game, really? Yes, that's the perfect thing to do. I know it's not Niz Niski's textile merchant, but I suppose it's better than nothing. What? Textile merchant. Niski? Wow, she actually starts saying what I was going to say. It's a game, never mind. Well, I'm not convinced that this will accomplish anything, unless your goal is to make me regret this day. I thought she said it was good, she was going to remember it. It seems to be a trivia game. Do you have any, do you have good general knowledge? This cucumber juice is not good. Let's make my mouth all like seize up. I'm gonna get some grape juice. BRB. Oh, five minutes left. I can stick it out. My mouth just feels all swollen. Maybe I'm allergic to cucumbers. Do you even know what kind of advanced knowledge I have to memorize and work with every single day? have good general knowledge generally certainly more than enough to beat a foreigner like you if you're so confident maybe we should make a bet what do you have in mind let's say if i win i get to i'll get to go on a real day why does that have to start with why, why am i trying to do that wait okay why does that have to be one of the okay you know what i think my character is purposely trying to do that my my character just secretly had a thing for reptiles his entire life he's a secretly a scaly a furry a furry scaly whatever let's say if i win i get to go on a real date with you no fitting me in during your break no complaining about everything and no acting as if you're doing me a favor especially because it was you who wanted to meet me in the first place and if i win i'll have you come in sometime so i can run more tests on you okay all right all right since it was your idea it's only fair that i start so how does this work it seems to be pretty simple we take turns drawing cards and asking questions until we both ask a number that we agree on beforehand. Whoever gets more right in the end wins. How many questions shall it be then? How about five? Let's make it three. Not sure how long this will take, and my break won't be for too long either. Alright, go on ahead then. I saw mischief in her eyes. Her stare is piercing, paired with the hint of an arrogant smirk that exposed her anticipation. She seemed confident that she would win and loved every second of it. Slowly, her hand went over to the deck of cards and drew the topmost. Cucumber got your tongue. Round one, fight! He was cited as one of, some, one of our most important historians, his work spanning over 20 books, credited with mapping out our entire history since the beginning of sentience. Oh, wait! I saw that earlier! It was the book I read! Crap! Excuse me, guys. I'm going back early in the stream. Where's the book? Where's the book scene? Yeah, it was after I met him. So let's go here, here, here. There's a variety of books. Okay. Man, myth and reality. Now let's find. after the okay sorry guys just give me up a sec i'm gonna cheat and i'm gonna look back okay so we are looking for look at an individual book there we go okay it's not humans from outer space let's check No, we're not draconic desire. Skip forward, come on. Stop, 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 stop. Let's keep going. Born to serve. No, don't, not the Exeem Spirit. I forgot, I went out of order. Dingus. Dapper, come on. serve, right? Nope, it doesn't even say, nope. Okay, well that doesn't serve any purpose. Crap. Oh, it doesn't say the name. What was the question? Okay, wait. What was the question again? Who served, right? Who's... 
So we're spending over 20 books accredited with mapping our entire history since the beginning of sentience. I don't know. I have one of the books. I just don't know what it's called. I'm going to go with Damien Dandelion. It's probably wrong. Is that Hazik? I'm pretty sure it's Hazik. It was Hazik. I was looking. I was like, that's got to be the right one. How could you even know something like that? You've only been here for, what, a few days? It was on the book. I'm pr fairly certain. My face was over, like, I think my face is covering where it's supposed to be, where the name was. So I think that's a problem. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> it was a lucky guess. <laughs> you won't be so lucky again. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it. I'm just going to leave it. Let's see how you fare with your first question. Bring it. How far can you walk into the woods? Only until the middle. Anything after that and you're walking out of the woods again. You're right. That's a rather weird question though. It's a riddle, to be honest. I suppose I read the right kinds of books growing up. I read the right kinds of book growing books growing up. I know most of those trick questions. Let's see what the second question has in store for you, shall we? It's another, it's, it's going to test me to see, like, make sure I was paying attention. Like, that's the point. All right, if there are five apples and you take away three, how many do you have? Three. Guess you should know, you also know your trick questions. I'm not dumb. Are you kidding me? Apparently so. I got two out of three. What about her? Okay, here's your question. In which year of our timeline did we gain sentience? Oh, I already know this one. Zero. The beginning of our timeline starts, marks the event when we gain sentience. I was about to say, I know what year it is. It's 14, 22, 22nd year since the beginning of their sentience. All right, again, have you played this game before? <laughs> it's a children's game. These questions aren't really a challenge. I'll just go ahead and draw the next card so we can end this. Yes, because it's two hours. After this, I'm going to end the stream. An adventurer who values his life has to choose between three rooms to cross, which one of the followings would be the safest. One, a room filled with poisonous gas, a room filled with 100 highly trained assassins, Room 3, a room submerged with water filled with alligators that have not eaten in 8 months. Okay, wait, I want to hear the question again. It has to choose between 3 rooms across would be the safest. A room filled with poisonous gas, because you could hold your breath. In fact, all the rooms are equally deadly. Alligators can go up to two years or more without food, making room three as deadly as the others. The other two rooms should not require any explanations. I picked the first one. I clicked number one. What do you mean? Wait, I didn't see that. There was none of these answers. Oh. I'm gonna go with that. It allows me to skip back and I'm gonna do it because they starve to death. No, because apparently they can go up for two years without eating. That's right, all the rooms are equally deadly. Alligators can go up for two years or more without food, making room three as deadly as the others. The other two rooms should not require any explanation. At least according to this card. To be honest, I think the answer is debatable. Don't worry, I'll still count it as the right answer for you. No need to get your toe caught in the door about it. Looks like this is going to be the last question. Just get it over with already. What is the approximate acceleration speed of a nose diving flyer? I'll have to think about that one for a minute. I was just kidding. <laughs> I still could have calculated that. Okay, here's a real question. What is the only known sub what is the only substance known to be lighter in a solid form compared to its liquid state? Water? That seems to be correct. Of course it is. Duh. You answered Anna's questions correctly. Well, it appears to me that our game has ended in a tie. What do you propose? I say we both get our rewards. After all, we each made a good effort to get them. Yes! I cheated to get mine, but oh well. That's fine with me. I don't have a, I won't have a spot in the facility to do the test for a while. Though, I suppose next time we meet, it'll be a date. Don't forget what I said earlier about what I expect from you on this date. You'd better be on your best behavior. <laughs> I'll try. Thank you. In any case, I should head back to work. My break is just about over. See you soon, then. 
Of course, I'll make sure you deliver your part of the deal. See you soon. Bye. Despite all odds, I managed to match her perfect score in the game we played. Even though my bet of forcing her to go on a proper date with me was more to get back at her for, for her earlier rudeness, I had not expected this outcome. I was not even sure what I expected from this meeting in the first place, but now I was locked into going on a date with her and being her own personal guinea pig. Whether anything good would come of this, I wasn't sure either. End end day. More free time. That was only a little bit of free time. Okay, okay you know what? Stop. Save. Can I save? Make a real save. Empty slot. Okay. Well, that will be it for this episode. Oh, not episode for this video. Thank you all for watching. It's two hours long. I should have made it shorter. Especially with, like, story games like this. Visual novels, I should definitely take a little bit less time in making these and reading. Because reading for quite this long is making it very difficult. My mouth is very dry. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but it's very dry. And it's making it hard to speak because my mouth is kind of swollen. So I'll, I'll try and do these. I'll make, I'll make these ones very short. That way I can do more gameplay oriented. Wait. Movement? 3D? I don't even know how to explain it. More action gameplay for you guys to watch. So thank you all for watching. Tune in later tonight because I'll be back not with this but possibly with Fortnite or even another game. We'll see what happens. But uh, thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time or i guess yeah see you in the next video bye guys did it end again did my hotkey change my hotkey must have changed it's not letting me quit so let's stop streaming with the button bye bye guys